What's going on out there, world? It's yours truly, the one, the only, Mr. More Than the DJ himself, DJ M. White, Martinez White, live in a living color. I could have been anywhere in the world today, but I'm here with you. I'm excited to be here at the Diversity Forum 2021. I'd like to welcome you into my dream circle. I want to talk to you about a concept of what it means to remix the future of black life. I want to thank you for joining me uh, here this afternoon. It's going to be an amazing day. Uh, some of you, uh, well, we still in morning uh, hours, but some of you may have be joining us from different parts of the world. I, I want to thank you. I want to I want to express uh, how much it means for you to be here with me today. Um, and I want to uh, uh, gift over to you a few philosophies of leadership surrounding uh, inclusive excellence and uh, what it means for us to key into a high frequency of faith and a wavelength of success. So I can't see the chat, but I need to make sure my chat is working. I cannot see the chat, um, but I want to make sure that it's working. So uh, before we get started, uh, you're going to need three sheets of paper. So, you know, borrow some paper from your neighbor. If you don't have much, if you don't have any, ask the person next to, next to you if you could, uh, you know, key into their frequency and ask them to, you know, lend you a, I, you, I need you to buy three sheets of paper right now. You're going to need three sheets of paper for this presentation. Some of you may be on a laptop. You need to get ready to type. This is where we are, but we're going to take this from where we are, from an abstract realm into a concrete reality. We're going to go into the depths of what it means to manifest the next 400 years of success for black Americans in this country spe specifically and, and remix the future of black life here in the United States of America uh, and around the globe. So I want to welcome you into my space. I want to make sure my chat is working. Uh, if you're ready to go up to 1,000, I need you to start with, uh, I think I'm on 500 already. I need you to start with 500. Drop 500 in the chat, 500. If you got your key, you got your keypad and it's working, I need you to drop your 500 in the chat because we're going to take this thing up to 1,000. And I need you to understand that this is where we're going to start, but this is not where we're going to end up. We're on a fantastic voyage. We all on the road to success. We want to complete the dream of Dr. King. What does that mean, Martinez? What does it mean to complete the dream of Dr. King? I want to welcome you into the Diversity Forum 2021. I'm your host, CEO of Intuition Productions, Martinez White. Find me at martinezwhite.com. I'm a 2010 UW alum commencement speaker. I actually uh, spoke about how fear cannot compete with purpose. We may dive into that realm uh, here today. But I talked about how fear cannot compete with purpose at the 2010 commencement address as the alumni keynote speaker. I served on the alumni board, the Wisconsin Foundation and Alumni Association board for a, a multitude of years. I did great work in that space. I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. The Gamma Epsilon chapter is my home chapter. We actually just celebrated 75 years this past weekend. We celebrated 75 years as a fraternal organization that was established on this campus in the 1940s. So I want to welcome you into this presentation. I need you to get ready to take some good notes. I can't see everybody's uh, comments in the chat, but my friend Yi, my co-host Yi, will uh, help me with that process. I'm a licensed wealth coach. I was able to earn my Series 6, my Series 63 uh, over uh, a course of years and be licensed in the spaces of uh, investment advising, and uh, insurance, financial uh, planning, and life insurance, asset uh, acquisition, and asset allocation. I'm the author of the book, Think Like a DJ. The uh, best-selling book, Think Like a DJ, Seven Steps to Spend Poverty into Prosperity. You see this book behind me. You see this image behind me. That's what you see in front of you as well. Seven Steps to Spend Poverty into Prosperity. How do we key into a high frequency of faith? and a wave of the success so that we can manifest our destiny. Some of you may heard of this philosophy as the law of attraction. Uh, some of you may heard it as uh, 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 some sort of a manifestation. Uh, what I think of it as is the process of putting yourself in masterful control of your destiny. You are the DJ of your life. Have you ever thought of yourself as a DJ? You are the DJ of your life and you are standing behind the masterful controls and the decks of life. The DJ, the turntables of life, you got to spin this music and this, these experiences in rhythm and in sync so that you get forward to rock your party. Your life is the party and you the DJ. I'm also an author of the book, I Fired My Boss. I Fired My Boss is a new book. It's not out yet. It's coming to you here in the 
in the fall months, towards Christmas, towards the holidays. It's a seven-step guide to ignite the CEO in you. What what does it take for you to, to express yourself through entrepreneurship, art and entrepreneurship? How do you take the things that you gifted, talented at, the things that you that you are already uh, given and born with, how do you take those seven skills, abilities, talents, gifts, how do you manifest from that artistic ability and take that to some higher level of entrepreneurship so that you can have multiple streams of income. We're going to talk about multiple streams of income and why income is so important. So you fire your boss, no matter who you work for, you are the boss of you and you take care of yourself. You act in your own best interest. You become your best advocate. You become the CEO of you. I'm also owner of the Dream Shop, a storefront on State Street, which is a collective with the Madison Black Chamber of Commerce, the Latino Chamber of Commerce, and the Monk Chamber of Commerce in the city of Madison, where we put together a, a, a a, a, a bodega style culture collectives right here on State Street at 444 State Street. It's a, a beautiful space that really accentuates entrepreneurship and gives us a deep dive into uh, really closing the racial wealth gap through entrepreneurial endeavors. Intuition Productions is my company. This is where we know for sure since the summer of 2003 when I was just a teenager that dreams were made to be achieved. That's my philosophy of leadership, that a dream is made to be achieved. We're going to talk about completing the dream of Dr. King today. And if we're going to talk about that, we're going to key into that higher frequency. I need you to buy into the leadership philosophy that a dream is already made to be achieved. So I hope you got your three sheets of paper. I need you to make sure you got your three sheets of paper. Uh, before we get going, I want people to let me know uh, if you can see these sheets of paper. I don't know if you can see this. What color is this sheet of paper? Drop in the chat. What color is this sheet of paper? If you don't mind, drop in the chat and tell me what color is this sheet. I hope you're saying white. This sheet should be. What color is the sheet? White. What color is it? One more time. All right. Now you tell me. You type in there what cows drink. What do they drink? What are they saying, ye? What do cows drink? So. Um, they have dropped like a lot of 500 for your past comments and everything. Um, and then as for. You, you went blank on me. We're going to keep going. Some people, I saw, some people thinking that cows drink milk. Uh, cows drink water. Just because you see a white sheet of paper doesn't mean that cows uh, associate themselves with drinking with milk. They make milk. I need you to pay attention to where we're going to go. We're going to go a little bit deeper. If you're ready to go deeper, just type in the chat. Tell me deeper. If you're ready to go deeper, type in the chat. Deeper. Are they typing deeper, Yee? I want to make sure because we up to 500 right now. We're going to take this thing up to 1,000. We got to go deeper. If we're looking at the statistic, uh, the statistical data here in Dane County specifically uh, in Madison and we live local, you will see that less than 5%, less than 0.5%, less than half a percent of businesses in Madison, Wisconsin are black owned. The urban, according to the Urban League of Greater Madison this year, life expectancy for a black man in Madison, Wisconsin, as you can see, is about 54 years old. Uh, life expectancy for black women here in Madison, Wisconsin is 60 years old, according to the Foundation for Black Women's Wellness. When we look at the social determinants of health, when we look at the areas in our community that are affecting us uh, on a daily basis, income and the racial wealth gap don't get a lot of attention. Uh, income and the racial wealth gap uh, becomes the, the bedrock of uh, our ability to ascend from where we are. In order to live in a capitalistic society, uh, we have to focus on making sure that we have capital. The root word of capitalism is capital. We want to make sure that we have the means to participate in this social economic uh, uh, structure that we live in. Looking at the numbers, $171,000 of the net worth of a typical white family is nearly 10 times greater than that of a black family at $17,000 um, as a net worth. We're going to talk a little bit about net worth. This is from a 2016 uh, statistic. We know that we can manifest the dream of Dr. King. We know that we can build on from where we are and get past this level of income and racial wealth gap Im impacting our ability to live, our ability to work, our ability to go to school and to ex just simply exist in our own skin and our uh, community. So what we want to do is move past 
from where we are and manifest a greater destiny. We want to get from picking a tempo and 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 and, and, and dropping our dropping our first record and moving from riding the wave, and we want to get to keep the ability for us to keep spinning hits. I'll talk about what that means so we can fill our dance floor, we can ride the wave, and we can ultimately rock our party. Our life is the party, and we have to have the ability and the means to exist in a, a system that uh, that is built on the infrastructure of capital, of capital. And we have to have access to it. We have to have, as black Americans in this country, we have to have the ability to uh, – uh, 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 to to start businesses and to build on the new bling. Some of us may know bling as 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 uh, every time I come around my city, bling bling, pinky ring worth about fifty, bling bling. That's not the bling bling I'm talking about. That's their rap lyrics. I'm talking about businesses, land, investments, net worth, and graduation. Can they type bling in the chat? Drop bling in the chat if you're ready for this. Businesses, land investments, net worth, and graduation education. This is a philosophy of leadership that I've adopted from one of my most important mentors who I actually met as a people program student and a people program scholar, Bob Wynn. Bob Wynn taught me about his philosophy of leadership as a, a leadership as a, a, a founder of Asset Builders of America, which is the new bling. We have to key ourselves a little bit and pivot ourselves away away from buying uh, uh, liabilities and graduate to a stratosphere assets. We have to get from the materialistic uh, 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 areas that we've uh, been developed in and, and grown in and grown through and manifest from our impoverished mindset to a, a, prosperous, a prosperity mindset, a prosperous mindset. I want to talk about that. How do we manifest the dream of Dr. King if we cannot go from a mindset of poverty to a mindset of prosperity, a mindset of lack to a mindset of abundance. We have to start to invest in the new bling. So if you're ready to go up to 1,000, I need you to hit 700 in the chat. We have 700. Go over to your keyboard and say number lock over there. You got the numbers. You should have a seven up top to the far left. Hit 700 if you're ready to go up to 1,000. Look at the median net worth by race here in this country. As we said, 171. Thousand dollars. The net worth of a typical white family is nearly ten times greater than that of a black family at seventeen thousand. And you see that here on the x and y axis. You see white families here, all families sort of here in this uh, median uh, area. Black families down here towards that seventeen thousand uh, dollar net worth. Dreams are made to be achieved, yet and still. Yet and still, dreams are made to be achieved. I'm gonna actually. Do it for the culture one time. Let's do it for the culture one time. When we're talking about Dr. King, I share in a brotherhood with Dr. King. Dr. King was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, the oldest and coldest brothers in the world. Shouts out to all my NPAC members that's uh, in the sound of my voice right now. Um, I want to thank you all for being a part of this circle of success. When we think about Dr. King, we know Dr. King in the fraternity. We know him as a pillar of success, but we also know him in a more uh, uh, in a, in a, from a different dimension. This brother is a Rubik's Cube. He's got different sides of, of, of the prism. And we know different sides of Dr. King. Most of us in the public forum have been taught about Dr. King's three pillars of success, social rights, civil rights, and voting rights. Many of us have not known about his fourth pillar of success that was really relevant towards the end of his life. Many of us have heard about Dr. King towards the end of his life how he was working towards making sure that uh, the sanitation workers had equal equal uh, uh, workers' rights. We, we also have learned about um, his bend towards uh, uh, making sure that the Vietnam War vets, when they, when they came back uh, to, to the states, that they had access to good jobs, that they had access to wealth, and uh, that they had access to, uh, you know, the ability to pull themselves up by, the, by their own bootstraps, that they had boots in the first place. The fourth pillar of Dr. King's success, if you look at social, civil, and voting rights, we have to realize that Dr. King was also focused on financial justice and economic inclusion. Social rights, civil rights, voting rights, financial rights, financial justice, and economic inclusion. That's what Dr. King wanted us to focus on. We ain't going to leave that like that with Dr. King around. We're going to fix that 
financial justice and economic inclusion, social rights, civil rights, voting rights, financial rights. What are financial rights? Financial rights are the access to equal and equitable housing. Access to equal and e equitable education is all wrapped into financial justice. The ability to take care of your own self uh, uh, and invest in yourself, invest in this country, allow your wealth to grow and it sustain you for X amount of time. How many of us want to retire? I know tons of us want to retire. At what age do you want to retire? Type in the chat. Tell me in the chat, at what age do you want to be done with work where you can say, you know, I'm actually uh, in a space of comfort. I can actually stop working right now. What are people saying? Yeah, at what age do people want to be done with work? They're saying 45. I know some people, some young people, millennials want to be done with work. They want to be done last week. <laughs> At what age do you want to stop working? We already up to 700. At what age do you want to stop working? We're looking at the next 400 years of success in this country for black Americans. At what age do they, do they say they want to stop working? You help me out. Things in a comment like 60, 70. 60, 70. Still coming in. Still coming in now. They want to retire now. They said right now they done with it right now. Okay, we, okay, we still on the job. You can't say that right now. You on the job, people. What are they, what they saying? Ye? 70, 60. So at what age do you want to be done with work? Okay, 60, 70. At, okay, what's the oldest person in your family? Who's the oldest person in your family? How old did they live? Let's say what's who, who's the oldest person in your family that or the oldest person you've ever, you ever heard of uh, that lived in your family? Life expectancy. Let's let's go with that. What are what are people saying? Ye, for life expectancy. How old are people living? 80s, 90s, 100, 120? I can't hear ye. I would imagine people want to live up until probably most people have family members that live up until 80s, 90s. So imagine if you want to stop working at 65 and you pass away at 95. Imagine at 95, um, you transition, you go into the afterlife, completely fine. You, you lived a great life or 100 years old or 80 years old. Imagine you stopped working it now or yesterday and you need to have income for 30 years from 65 to 95. You need to pay yourself each and every month. You need to have some source of income to pay yourself so that you can live and you don't have to go back to work. Or you go be a greeter at a local Walmart or, or a, a, a local grocery store or something of the sort. You're your grocery boy at the, at the store at 70 years old and you're trying to earn your keep so that you can live in the system that we know to be uh, capitalism. Imagine that. So we have to have some source of income for 30 years of our lives towards the back of our lives. That's financial justice and economic inclusion. That's what Dr. King was working towards and what he was fighting towards. We know that to be true in the fraternity and Alpha Phi Alpha that Dr. King was focused on financial justice and economic inclusion. And we know that this wasn't just something that he thought was uh, small, it was more of a, of, a, of a pillar of his success. It was one of the things that he felt would actually give black Americans the tools and the assets that they need to graduate uh, from the working class to the middle class and have access to the, 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 the wealth that this, com that this country uh, bestows upon itself. I had a chance to live in Africa. I lived in Kenya in 2009. I did HIV testing for Alicia Keys in Mombasa, Kenya at the Mkomani Bomu Medical Clinic in the Chamgamwe neighborhood of Mombasa. And I was working there. I did about 150 hours of research, anthropological uh, deep dive uh, research on what it means to live in an African context as a black American. Oftentimes, I was the first black American that any other Africans I'd ever met. Uh, then that's another conversation. That's a whole other presentation. But what I learned in that context is how important it is uh, for us as black Americans to understand our world and our global influence and culture. Would you ever rob a poor man? Would you ever rob somebody that, would you ever rob a poor man? Would you ever rob somebody that, uh, that couldn't, you couldn't gain from, that you couldn't get anything from? What, what would that be called? Maybe a waste of time to try to rob somebody that doesn't have uh, what you want or the assets that you, that you feel like you need? I learned living in Africa myself in an anthropological study and, uh, you know, volunteering and eating, eating the food and meeting the people and connecting with 
those that I lived uh, with and I love my host brothers and my mo and my host mom and people that took care of me for months. I learned uh, uh, that we as, as black Americans, that we are rich. We have, many of us have seen Black Panther. Some of us have seen the movie. Y'all don't want to go back. I'll take y'all back to Wakanda for real. Wakanda, some of us seen the movie. What if perhaps black Americans, what, what if we are actually the vibranium uh, of the earth? Perhaps we are the, vib the vibranium of the earth. Perhaps we have assets uh, uh, by being uh, uh, direct descent descendants of the first uh, uh, humans that, you know, that we found in this country uh, or in this, in this globe. I've, I've been to the Kenya uh, National Museum and I've seen the, the first remains of uh, Lucy and a couple other remains that if, if, if we all emerge, if science is proven that we're, we've all emerged as a, as a global society from the epicenter of a Pangea experience where the world was one and all land masses were one land mass called Pangea and we all sprouted from this arena Perhaps there are uh, vibranium uh, vibrations that are connected to those areas and parts of our planet on this earth. I got a chance to experience that in real time. I can say that that's a, that's a, that's a real feeling, that's a real belief that I bought into living in Kenya and volunteering at an HIV hospital and realizing that no one will rob a poor man, that we have to naturally uh, have been rich. And you look at the resources that are in Africa, you look at the cotton, the natural resources, the gold, the tea, the coffee, the diamonds, the things that are there. Uh, you cannot return to me uh, a, 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 a false statement that Africa and that land is not a, a, a rich part of our global context. Poverty is a reality. We know that for sure. My story is that I got a chance to grow up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, as a 16-year-old college student, I got admitted to the University of Wisconsin. Many of you know my story, uh, but you may not know the depth of how it connects to remixing the future of black life. My story is rooted in uh, coming from Milwaukee in the 53206 area code. Many of you have seen documentaries about that part of our state and what the social determinants of health say about that, that area of our state or how many more likely, how many more times likely you are to be in prison or, uh, you know, find failure and not success. I emerged from that arena uh, and I was born in 1989. So the early 90s when it was high crime, it was the effects of the uh, 70s and 80s and, 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 and the war on drugs and things uh, manifesting in our community. It was, uh, you know, the death of uh, Tupac and Biggie, this East Coast, West Coast uh, media warfare between two of the biggest, uh, most powerful black uh, uh, artists at the time. At the time, I know that growing up from poverty, and emerging from that and uh, having my father pass away, rest his soul, Dr. O.C. White, who would be in his 90s if he was alive today. I know that coming from that, that uh, Milwaukee, um, is, 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 it's just a space where we have opportunity to grow and that poverty is actually a reality, that there are spaces and uh, uh, zip codes in our country that uh, have a need for more resources and investment. Uh, you may have uh, known these places to be some of our biggest cities, Dallas, Detroit. Uh, Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, Compton, uh, L.A., all of these things. You've heard of these spaces, uh, uh, you know, East St. Louis. You've heard of these spaces that have opportunity for, de for development. Poverty is real. I don't want to act like it's not. <laughs> Poverty is also a mindset. It's a way of thought. It's both and. Prosperity is equal and opposite. Prosperity is also a, a mindset, and it's also a reality. If we want according to the social psychology of uh, The Secret by written by Rhonda Byrne. Many of you may have read this book. If we want to uh, key into a higher frequency, we can have to replace it. We have to replace our, our, our one thought with another. We cannot have two coexistent beliefs and philosophies of leadership in our mind. Poverty is a reality in the mindset for sure, but so is prosperity. Which one will you choose? Think like a DJ, seven steps to spend poverty into prosperity, a mindset of lack into a mindset of abundance. It's going to take for us to go through the seven steps of picking a tempo, of dropping your first record, feeling the beat, ride the wave, keep spinning hits, fill the dance floor, and rock the party. We about to go up a little bit. We on 700, hit 800 in the chat. 
We about to go up a little bit. We going to a thousand. Hit eight hundred in the chat. Think like a DJ. These are the seven steps to spin poverty into prosperity. Remember, you are the DJ in masterful control of your life. If your life was a party, who will RSVP to your life? If you only gonna live once, will your one party become a party of one? Is it just gonna be you at your celebration of life at the end of your life, laying up in the front of the room in the pine box? Who's gonna draw on your, you know, into your dream circle? Who can you draw into your dream circle? Who can you get to rock with you and feel the dance floor with you? Who can you build into your team? That's what this life is about, black Americans. That's what this life is about, Americans. That's what this life is about, everyone, citizens of the earth. How can you manifest and draw from yourself from the deepest depths within your cinder block and the core of who you are? How can you pull from that and manifest a future reality, an intergenerational wealth, so that by the time you're ready to walk away from work, you can walk, walk into the sunset peacefully, and then when you transition, you have intergenerational impact. That's the American dream. Our opportunity to build on an idea, to have a concept, and to manifest that destiny. That's what it means to live in this country. That's what it means to be an American. It's to have the ability to extract from an abstract realm some sort of idea and, and create a concrete reality. So we on 800. I need you to drop 800 in the chat if you have not hit your 800. I need you to hit that 8, that 0, that 0. We're going into the, the, the Think Like a DJ Leadership Philosophy. Intuition Productions this is the company, this is the philosophy and the mantras that dreams are made to be achieved. This is a philosophy I had as a 16-year-old kid when I crafted this company and uh, I came to college as a chancellor scholar. And Dr. Marcel Lee called me at 1130 at night and said, baby, I got a full ride scholarship for you to come to the University of Wisconsin, books, tuition, everything. Room and board, we're going to support you. All you need to do is keep a B average. How did I go from poverty to prosperity? How did I have my father pass away when I was a three-year-old boy, have early childhood trauma, behavior issues, and challenges as a young black kid in the Milwaukee public school system to being a great father to my own five-year-old son who's got intergenerational wealth? He's got a coloring book, the Think Like a DJ coloring book that's his own source of income. How did I turn from poverty and pivot towards prosperity? It's this philosophy of thinking like a DJ. And I didn't realize it until I started writing the book. Dreams are made to be achieved. Seven steps to spend poverty into prosperity. You need to pick a tempo. First off, you need to make a decision. You need to write your vision and create your dream statement and craft your vision board. You need to take the opportunity to sit down and cut out different areas and different you know, images of that resonate with you, that just resonate with your primal instinct. Things that you look into a, 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 a magazine with or you look into some sort of publication, you just cut that out and put that on the board. You need to be able to see that board each and every day. I promise you, you will be able to craft your vision from that board, write your vision, make a decision, and choose. Pick a tempo. Are you going to start at 66 beats per minute? Are you going to start slow as your DJ of your own party of your own life? Or are you going to start at 120 beats per minute, which is up-tempo, fast music? Uh, Frankie Beverly and Mays, uh, Before I Let Go, a little dance music. Or uh, Luther Vandross, uh, 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 some, 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 some Luther Vandross, some up-tempo Rihanna or something of the sort. You going to start up-tempo or you're going to start down-tempo like the Isley Brothers? Pick a tempo, ladies and gentlemen. Where do you want to go? How, do you, how are you going to manifest from where you are to where you want to be? You are the DJ of your life. You are masterful control. You need to be able to drop your first record, act, out, act on faith, feel the beat, connect with like-minded individuals, Ride the wave and radically trust yourself. Be your own uh, best advocate. Put yourself in the best possible position to succeed. Keep spinning hits. You got to consistently connect and create a morning routine. Get into a higher frequency of faith every morning so that once you start to believe, everything that's on that wavelength of success starts to come towards you. So you start to create your own reality because you already on that frequency of, of belief. And just like I know, you know, as, as a performing D for the last 15, 16 years, I know for a fact that music and, and, and things on a certain frequency inspire us to have certain emotional and emotive uh, outcomes. So I need you to key into a high frequency early in the morning. I need you to keep spinning hits and consistently connect and create a morning routine so that you can fill your dance floor. Step six, build a dream circle around your business. 
there are three businesses in this country. I need you to drop in the chat. You should have hit 800 already. Some of the three businesses in this country. Tell me what they say. What are three businesses that you can put on your keyboard right now that are in America, in this country? What would you say? Three good businesses. What are they saying? Yeah, I need your help. Yeah, right now, nothing has been in the chat yet, but the 800s are, like, coming through. The 800s still coming through. What are the three businesses in this country? We need to... We need to key into this a little bit. What are three businesses that exist in this country? We fell in the dance floor, building a dream circle around our business. What are three businesses in this uh, context, in this country? Somebody tell me something. still coming through. What'd you say? 800 still coming through. They still hitting the 800s. Well, you work with me, Yee. Come on, help me, Yee. What are three businesses, Yee? Mm. <laughs> food restaurant um corporations let's see food restaurants corporations give me one more manual corporations i'm listening apple is in the chat apples okay so technology <laughs> businesses what else they got in the chat anything else Social media. So, okay, social media, Facebook is in the news, Apple. Okay, we're thinking about tech companies. There's all kinds of businesses in this country. It's food businesses. It's restaurants. It's three businesses in this country. I need you to realize this. I need you to get your pen and your pad. I need you to get your keyboard ready. It's three businesses. It's your business, it's God's business, and it's other people's business. It's three circles of influence. Okay, we're in a learning environment. Most of you are scholastic. We don't have students on the call. We have scholars on the call. Most of you have seen a Venn diagram. There are three different businesses that all connect in the middle. They all connect like a Venn diagram. They all overlap, about a third or so. It's God's business, other people's business, and your business. Of all the three businesses, which, as they overlap, which one can you control the most? Ye? Down here, they have health care, services, health finances, education. Out of God's business, your business, and other people's business, which business can you control the most? What would you say, Yee? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Out of God's business, my business, and other people's business, I control my business the most. My business is, is, is what's in most control, so I need to build a dream circle of people. Once I keep spending hits, I'm going to fill my dance floor. I'm going to conjure up success. I'm going to build something from nothing. I'm going to come up, you know, I'm going to go rags to riches here in this country. That's what it means to live in this country is to have the ability to live 30 years without having a source of income, uh, you know, that you trade time or money for, uh, trade time for money. You don't, you don't have that. That, that, that dynamic, that's a one level of income. We're going to talk about the three levels of income. I need you to get ready to rock your party so you can leave in a generation of wealth. Let's go up to 850. Come on now. These people like numbers. Come on, let's show them some numbers. Let's go up to 850. We're about to torch. Let's go to 850. Hit in the chat, 850. If you participate with me, because we're going up to 1,000. We're going to wait to 1,000. We're going to go higher. We're going to reach deeper. We're going to torch and reignite the dream of Dr. King. As we talked about, Dr. King, he wasn't only focused on social, civil, and voting rights. He's focused on economic justice, financial justice, economic inclusion, giving us the ability to get, you know, equal housing so people don't redline our neighborhoods or gentrification doesn't uproot us from the neighborhoods that we do uh, buy homes in, things that are sort that we have the ability to invest in ourselves and, you know, reveal our, heal ourselves and reveal our wealth. So we're going to reignite the dream. That's the only reason change happens is if we torch. The only reason change is going to happen is if we torch, if we reignite the dream of Dr. King, if we realize that this man's work is not done. We know that rest our soul, sister Coretta Scott King, we know that she was working on, you know, manifesting his work for the rest of her life. If you read uh, Poweronomics by Dr. Claw Anderson, he even highlights and talks about and Dr. Boyce Watkins, a financial uh, analyst and professor, uh, uh, one of my one of the most uh, prolific uh, writers of our time right now. If you read their work, they talk about how 
Coretta Scott King was working on manifesting the fourth pillar of Dr. King's work, financial justice and economic inclusion. Capitalism, the root word of capitalism is capital. This is a system of producers and consumers. This is a global economic framework that we live in where it's a system of wealth uh, uh, that's basic on the and, and, and lives on the foundation and the bedrock of this concept of caveat emptor. What is caveat emptor? It's a beautiful word. It's a beautiful word. It simply it means buyer beware. You can look up to the etymology on your own time. You can dive into, you know, is it Latin? Is it Greek? Is it this? You guys, uh, you women, you ladies, you brothers on this call, all of y'all are, like I said, y'all scholars, not students. We're going to key into a high frequency for the next 400, completing the dream of Dr. King. It's levels to this. You heard of OPP, right? You heard of OPP. You heard the old song from the 90s, Naughty by Nature. You down with OPP? You, you down? You down with OPP? Let's go. We're going to go to YouTube. We're going to keep going. We're going to go right past YouTube. You already down with OPP. Y'all on A50. The next 400, completing the dream of Dr. King. There are three different levels of income in this country. OPP. Ordinary, passive, and portfolio income. Ordinary, passive, and portfolio. Are you down with OPP? Are you ready for the next level? Do you want to go up? It's levels to this now. Like I said, it's levels to this. We're going up now. OPP, ordinary income where you trade time for money, a.k.a. a job. Everybody on this call got a job. Passive income, real estate, products, music, books, apparel, uh, video game, things of the sort. Come on and shop with me down at the Dream Shop and get you one of these shirts that say dreams are made to be achieved. You know, you need to get one of these shirts and come hang out with me at the shop and get a copy of this book. Think like a DJ. That's passive source of income. If you write a book, if you create some source of apparel, if you have some source of income from uh, real estate, uh, video games, you can drop in the chat other passive sources of income that you may be uh, aware of. Uh, some of you may be into uh, drops uh, shipping. Some of you may be into, uh, you know, NFTs, uh, things of the sort, some passive source of income, portfolio income investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, um, where you receive some sort of dividend or a payout for a uh, exchange of time you put money somewhere for an exchange of a certain amount of time and then you receive uh, some sort of dividend or some sort of prop some sort of profit sharing that's OPP we talk about budget and saving we talk about budgeting and saving and taking our money to reduce um, financial waste and budget and create a budget for ourselves so that we know where we've allocated our dollars and where they're going to go and what they're going to do for us. Because we need our money to work for us as hard as we work for it, if not more. You know what I'm talking about. So when we go to a, a space of thinking about ordinary passive and portfolio income, when we get our ordinary income and we're working and we're trading time for money at a job, we need to be able to uh, manage that income in a fashion to where we can build a nest egg, to where we can put dollars away for that day. It ain't got to be rainy. It could be sunny. I'm going to say it's a sunny day. I'm 65. I'm walking out of work for, you know, the next 30, 35 years, even though life expectancy, if you look at the actuary science at, a, at an insurance company, is going to show you that the life expectancy has been stretched from 100 years old out to 120 based on medical research and things that uh, we've been able to build into our, into our medicine. We're expected to live a little bit longer. So knowing that, imagine you outlive your income. I just need you to use your imagination. Imagine you outlive your income. Imagine you 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 live uh, up until a ninety-five, and you only got enough money to last you to seventy-five. Where do you go? Somebody tell me where do you go? Do you go to a nursing home? Do you go to a do you go to a community living center? Uh, do you go to uh, where? How do you you know who's uh, paying for you know you're a little bit older? You're not working. Naturally, time catches up to the body, and uh, you may need some sort of medical support. Who's helping you pay for that for 30 years? You don't want to outlive your income for 20 to 30 years. We have to get into a key of uh, 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 a frequency of putting ourselves in masterful control of our destiny and thinking like a DJ. We're going to pick a tempo. We're going to decide today. We're going to make a decision. We're going to envision ourselves. We're going to write our vision, and we're going to see ourselves walking into we're going, to, we're going to see ourselves walking into the sunset. We want to save money for a sunny day. We don't want to save and budget and budget and save for a rainy day. Who wants to do that? That's pretty boring. Wouldn't you agree? 
Let's go. Let's budget. Reduce financial waste. We're also going to save, build financial capacity. Some of us think budgeting is uh, cheapen, you know, cheapening ourselves, uh, uh, you know, cheating ourselves from uh, luxury or the ability to have. Uh, we think of uh, when I was growing up, we went to the budget. That was, the, you know, that was the movie. That wasn't a big movie. That was the budget. You know, we go to the budget. You see the movie for a dollar or two. The movie is already out six months. It was the budget. That's the impoverished mindset that some of us think of, the mindset of lack, that budgeting creates lack. Budgeting actually creates abundance and it creates prosperity because it reduces financial waste. Saving allows us to build financial capacity. Some of us think of saving as cheating ourselves, our mindset. Um, and often what I found as a financial and a wealth coach uh, when working with young people is that they think of saving as uh, cheating themselves from opportunity at the moment and um, you know not having that instant gratification. That's just not young people. That's also people that's walked away from work at 65, 75, and they want access and access to things that cost because we live in capitalism. They need the capital. We need to get into a space where we can see ourselves as saving as, you know, actually building capacity and not losing out on the uh, opportunity. Because once we build and invest and we save and we invest and over the course of time, we'll see, we'll see a return to us uh, in, a, uh, in a fashion that we probably haven't seen uh, before. So uh, the next 400 net worth, I want to do a quick activity. If you got your, if you got your paper really quick, we're going to do assets, liabilities, uh, uh, net worth um, activity where we're going to kind of do a little quick uh, budgeting. So I want you to kind of key into this with me. You should have a piece of paper in front of you. I want you to take at the top of your page. I want you to just write at the top of your page. Go on and write up there. You can't see mine. You can't see mine. Right on the top of your page, uh, I'm going to give each of you uh, – Let's say $3,000 per month, $3,000 a month. Then I'm going to ask you at the top of your page in that circle of $3,000, I want you to take that $3,000 and I want you to on one side write an arrow and then on the other side write another arrow. I don't know if you can see this. I need you to write arrows on your page. Write arrows. You got your arrows on there. So on one side, I want you to write all of your expenses. Write expenses on that one side of the one arrow. You're going to write expenses. At the other arrow at the bottom of that arrow coming down from the 3,000 at the top of your page, it's going to say expenses one side of that arrow. The other arrow is going to say surplus. So you take your expenses. I put my expenses on the left side of my budget. You take your expenses, and then you write in there from your $3,000, you write in there your rent. You write your phone. You write your uh, insurance. Let's write, uh, what should we put in there? Other Y'all know what to put in your budget. People got mortgage. People have uh, uh, miscellaneous expenses. Just write your, you know, just go ahead and write down what you know your, uh, what we call your, your FLEs are, your fixed living expenses. Your FLEs, your fixed living expenses should be on one side. Your surplus is going to come on the other side. So you have $3,000. Take out your phone because you're going to need to use your phone a little bit uh, later in the presentation. I'm going to need you to use your phone. So take out your phone and start subtracting from that 3000 your your mortgage, your phone, all your fixed living expenses, things that you know you pay uh, every month. Let's say it's uh, a membership uh, to a gym, things that are important to you uh, health-wise. It could be uh, any type of prescriptions. Go ahead and write that. Subtract that. Go on the cal you know, the calculator on your phone. Everybody got a calculator on their phone. They know exactly where it is. I need you to use it right now. Three thousand dollars minus all your expenses. Three thousand dollars minus all your expenses. So on the other side, the other arrow, I need you to write. After you subtract all of that, we produce a financial waste. After you subtract all of that, you're gonna write the other number. The rest, the remaining amount, whatever's left, the surplus, write it on the side of the surplus, on the side that says surplus. So I'm put my surplus on there. That's said we got. Now we got surplus. Whatever that number is, it's your number. That's your magic number. That's your magic number. That's what you have to either plan with or play with. It's up to you. Now we're going to plan for the future, for that sunny day. Or are we going to play with all our money? Are we going to plan for the opportunity to live for 30 years without working and trading time for income and we have some sort of passive or portfolio income? Or are we going to keep trading 
Time for Money is stay in the ordinary income space where we actually uh, tax uh, the most in the ordinary income space where we work the hardest and the money is uh, taxed the highest is in our workspace, in our, in, our, in our ordinary income in the OPP. Do we want to live that way forever? Probably not. So you got a surplus, 1,500, 1,200, 1,000, whatever it is. I need you to divide and what percentage do you want to plan for your future successful self? Because we've already picked the tempo. We've already dropped our first record. We believe in ourselves. We on this wavelength. We're going to ride the wave. We're going to keep spinning hits. We're going to feel the dance floor. We're going to rock the party. Then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna live our most successful life. What are you going to plan with? What percentage are you going to play with? What percentage are you going to plan with? It could be 50, 50 percent. Let's look at assets minus liabilities, your net worth. Assets, the things you own. Liabilities, the things you owe. Assets, what you own, things that have credible and uh, 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 some sort of uh, collateralized element to them that you can trade for value. That's what you, what you own. Your assets, your liabilities are what you owe. Purchasing power, taxes and inflation. Y'all may be thinking of the rapper T.I. I need you to remember T.I., not the rapper, taxes and inflation. Taxes and inflation. What are taxes and inflation? The impact of inflation, inflation is, is, is serious. Uh, when I was a kid, I could buy for a dollar. What could you buy for a dollar? I ain't going to talk about how old I am. What could you buy for a dollar when you was a kid? Don't get in my business. You want to know how old I was. How many loaves of bread could you get for a dollar? When you was a kid, now what, what does about a dollar buy you? When I was a kid, I could go to the store and get four bags of chips for a dollar. Now one dollar costs a dollar sixty nine. So I'm not definitely going to get four. That's inflation. That's the impact of living in this country that's based on capital, that's based on financial capacity and ability for us to reduce waste and to actually uh, build our financial capacity, invest in ourselves so we can live 30 years without having to trade time for money. And we have one of the OPPs, we have passive and portfolio income. That's the dream of Dr. King. That's manifesting the dream of financial inclusion, financial justice. That's what it means to have economic uh, ascendance in this country. Inflation can reduce your purchasing power and retirement. Inflation, inflation is a general increase in the price of goods and services over time. During a long period of time, like retirement, inflation can have a negative impact on how many dollars that you, how much your dollars can buy. Um, if you look at this inflation chart, $100,000 over the course of 30 years, let's say 30 years down here, at a basic inflation, inflation is typically at about, normally at about two and a half, five, two and a half to five percent. Let's say as we split the middle and say it's three percent. It's three percent inflation. That hundred thousand dollars over 30 years is only going to buy me forty thousand dollars worth of goods at a three percent inflation. Lord, don't let it hit a four percent inflation. That hundred thousand dollars is going to be ten thousand uh, uh, dollars. Uh, it's going to be worth less. Ten thousand dollars less over 30 years. And then if it hit 5%, I'm just done. I had $100,000 and I'm done. If I had a million dollars and I need to, you know, still pay taxes on the income, let's say I got a million dollars and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 401k millionaire. I'm a 401k millionaire. I got a million dollars in my 401k. I saved enough money. I feel like I'm a millionaire and I still have to pay taxes on that money when I withdraw it. But I also, uh, the dollar amount, you know, because of inflation, the dollar amount that I have is not going to buy me what it bought me, you know, 30 years ago. I'm going to have less in this space uh, available to me. Imagine if inflation just creeps up or you just keep your money. Uh, let's say, you know, you keep your money in a, a, a savings account where it's growing less than uh, 3%. If you got money that's uh, growing less than 3%, it's actually losing purchasing power over the course of time because it's buying you less. It's, it's getting the money is actually uh, de it's deflating and not inflating. It's going the opposite direction. So if you don't invest and you don't get in the game and you don't allow yourself to uh, put money away for a sunny day, if you don't put money away and you don't let it grow, even if it's going to be taxed later, if you don't let it grow more than 3% um, right now, then you're allowing your dollars to uh, work less for you and not more for you, and they're naturally going to work less based on inflation. So we don't want that for ourselves. When we look at top marginal federal income tax rates, when we look at this arena, you see the taxes uh, back here in the 40s. At the income, at the federal income level, we're up, up to the 90s, 94th percentile. Look at that. Uh, taxes right now on uh, federal income taxes. This is uh, this chart only goes up to 18, so it's still uh, around this area. About 37% uh, 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 is the highest sort of area, 40%. 
So every, uh, you know, hundred dollars or so, we're thinking about uh, 40% the, that money being taxed up to up, the most it can be taxed up to is about, you know, $40 or uh, 40% of what you would think of just as a, as a dollar amount or 40 cents on a dollar. So over the course of time, uh, think about uh, the tax rates creeping up or down. Um, you know, you know what's happening in our social uh, political environment. Do you think that taxes are going to go up or uh, do you, would you predict that they're going to go down or go back? What would you say? What are people saying, Yee? Do you do, do think, you know, we look at the history of taxes. They've been up higher before. Are they going to go up or do people think they're going to go down? Chat is still loading, but I personally think that it might go up in the future. It might go up. So if we, if we know taxes are, are going to go up, then we have to look at our portfolio income as a way for us to pay ourselves in the future to make sure that we mitigate tax, that we pay our fair share to the country that we love, the America that we love that's helped us uh, get from uh, Detroit to Chicago just through, you know, a freeway system. And uh, there's an interstate and you can get from A to B, have access to uh, education and have access to just, you know, some of the basic human needs that are not uh, necessarily existent in a third, uh, in a developing world con uh, context that I've seen by living in a developing world. We have the ability in this country, we have the ability to access this idea of the American dream, this rags to riches, that we can uh, transcend uh, racism and we can, uh, we can transcend uh, financial uh, injustice and, and, and financial racism. We can transcend that by having access to, you know, we can, we can, if we can transcend that, if we can, Imagine what could happen if we could transcend the, 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 the concept of racism and really buy into uh, more of, a, of, a, of, a, of an ability for us to you know, pull ourselves up uh, through our bootstraps. If there was no racism, uh, how much more successful would I be today? How much more successful would you be today uh, had there been no racism? Uh, if we could get through social civil and uh, voting rights and we could transcend and reach a little bit, not throw away of uh, the baby with the bath water, we hold on to what's been ours because uh, what is ours and what's mine has my name on it and it's been built for me to have it. We can hold on to those things, but we can stretch and we can reach into the new bling. What do you think will happen to black Americans and lifestyles in this country if we can have intergenerational wealth and see ourselves as the DJs of our lives and CEOs of us and putting ourselves in the driver's seat of our destiny, regardless of the social uh, economic uh, circumstances that we see around us, what if we did uh, 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 what we knew we could do and we manifested that destiny, that's possible. Other people come to this country and do it all the time. We help build this country. We help manifest this destiny. We built this thing uh, for hundreds of years of 400 years of free labor. And we want to think about the next 400 years and think about manifesting our destiny. You can't include us. You don't want to include us in economic uh, success and we helped build this thing. It wouldn't be where it is uh, without my ancestors and my forefathers. That's nonsense. It's impossible. So as far as to put ourselves in the best possible position to succeed, we're we'll looking at ordinary passive and portfolio income. Portfolio income gives us a tax advantage. Uh, typically, portfolio income beats inflation, the rising cost of living, and grows past the, uh, the rising cost of living. And it gets into a, a deeper realm. It's, a, you know, we talk about pre-retirement income. That's your ordinary income. You get that money, you invest it in different ways. All these different buckets here pay you a cash reserve to have retirement income. So you can have that sunny day. You got 401ks, you got Roth accounts, life insurance, investments, stocks, bonds, things of the sort. You should take the opportunity to sit with a financial advisor, sit with someone that's important to you, that you connect with to talk about your options and how you create different streams of income for yourself uh, towards your retirement years. Uh, a 401k gives you the ability to put money away. Your employer puts money away. You put some away. They typically give you a match. That money normally is taxed later. Like you said, ye, taxes may go up just based on what we know about our social political environment um, and our economic uh, structure. Taxes may go up. So if we know taxes are going to go up, I wouldn't put all my money in a 401k. I would diversify my portfolio because my 401k is going to be taxed later, likely at a higher tax bracket than where it is now, because it's not going to give me a tax advantage uh, 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 later. It's going to give me one right now. I'm going to be taxed on that money. It's called tax deferred. Think TD or touchdown. That money is 
kicked down the, the football field. It's deferred down, down the football field for us to get that money. It's going to grow for 30 years, 40 years while we work, and we'll have access to it when we get ready to walk away from work into the sunset. That 401k is still going to be taxed at that point. So we put money in that you know, account, allow it to grow. It's going to be taxed later, but we know we want to diversify our portfolio. Likely it's going to be taxed at a higher tax bracket. A Roth account gives us the option to put money away, um, and it gives us the chance to grow money tax-free. Investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, stocks give you the chance to uh, buy individual shares, and you get a chance to grow you know, your wealth over the course of time as the share grows in rate or in price. Um, and then if you look at mutual funds, it's sort of like a slither of all different kinds of different stocks in a portfolio and a nice bundle and a fund so that they all share the ability to uh, uh, share the and brunt, bear the brunt of some of the accounts that go down. There'll be some other accounts that pick up the difference and it'll sort of be a wash uh, in you know basic terms. You got deferred annuities, which typically give you the chance to put money away uh, as a, you know, if you, you know, you're a little bit older, you may be 80 years old, you get $200,000 to your name. If you're used to living on $50,000 a year, you only have enough money to live until 84. You got enough money for four years. $50,000 a year, you got 200000 Instead of outliving that 200, you could buy an annuity, put the money away, not have access to it, and that annuity will actually annuitize and annualize itself and kick you a, a paycheck every month until you die, no matter how long you live, whether it's four more years or 40 more years. You got life insurance, which gives you the ability to put money away, and a permanent life insurance policy that grows over time, you can extract money from that policy. Many of your grandmothers have done that before. Term life insurance also uh, gives you the chance to create instant estate when you pass away so that you can uh, leave a legacy for someone to pay your final expenses and things of the sort. So that gives you, uh, you know, income and gives you the ability to build on uh, what you've already uh, built in this country. And, you know, you've already built success through ordinary income and you, you've traded time. Uh, you know, for money in the ordinary income space, how do you get your income to work for you? Term versus permanent life insurance, like I said, some of us have term insurance through our employer. There are also options for permanent life insurance. Uh, I don't necessarily uh, work in this uh, environment today or in this space, but based on my three years of being an investment advisor um, and being a licensed wealth coach today, I know that term is a low cost insurance that typically rises over the course of time. Permanent is a normal cost. Uh, permanent is a, a, a let's not say normal. Let's say um, it's a um, it, it's a, 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 a cost that's a constant. It's a constant cost. It's a, a standard premium. It doesn't change. Uh, it's not a rising cost like term. Term is really low, but permanent typically is a higher premium, but it doesn't change. It doesn't go up. Uh, typically, at some point, term insurance has some level of uh, uh, validity to it, but then it makes more sense to have permanent at a certain price to just have. The permanent because the term insurance you're renting it until about 80 t80 is normally the term that you get t80 most of us like we said earlier may live to 195 years old uh if the lightning bolt strike you outside of 80 and you pass away outside of 80 you end up uh not getting the term payout whatever it was a million dollars a half a million dollars two million whatever it is because you pass beyond the term permanent is more like owning and saving and building equity it's not like renting the policy at 80, up until age 80. Typically, a permanent policy at age 65, it could be paid up uh, where you don't put any more premium into it. And normally, it beats inflation and it grows beyond the cost of living so that the dollars are not getting cheaper. It's not growing you know, down here below 5% and the money's getting you know, cheaper if this graph was over here will be you know, still low and this one will be exponentially high. Instead, your money in a permanent policy beats inflation. It's not below five or three percent. It's not down here. It's above at five percent or, or, or better typically. And you see your money growing uh, in that policy over time. And you can even uh, in retirement supplement your income, uh, you know, whatever you have for income at that time with uh, some cash from your life insurance policy. And then you get like most millionaires, like 90 percent of millionaires, you get four or five different streams of income. And you manifest in the dream of Dr. King of economic uh, inclusion, economic justice. When we look at taxes, this is what I'll be really quick with. Look at single filers. If you can see this graph is really small, you might have to get close to the screen. Look at your ordinary income tax. The more you make, look at this tax bracket here. If we get up to a half a million dollars, this is you know the low end of our income. This is the high end. So let's say we get up to 40,000, 85,000, 160. We get up to, okay, a half a million dollars. 
over half a million dollars, look at the tax rate. The more you make, the more they take, right? That's what grandma taught us. The more you make, the more they take with ordinary income. Ordinary income, that O, that P, that P, that ordinary income, I told you that it is taxed the highest. It typically is. The more you make, the more it's going to be taxed. Capital gains tax is your uh, passive or your portfolio income that's coming from your portfolio. That's coming from the five buckets I just showed. Show, show, uh, I just had an opportunity to show you here. Those buckets, all these buckets create that portfolio income. They beat inflation, and they also have a tax advantage. Capital gains, the capital, the money that's there that's gaining and that's growing, that is typically taxed at about 15%. So the money you make over here in the ordinary income area is taxed normally. Most of us are between this 80000 you know, 24% tax bracket, you know, 22% taxes, uh, uh, 22%. So, you know, and then, you know, you got cap gains tax at 15%. So there's about a 7 to 10% differential between our capital gains tax, the money that's growing, you know, behind our back while we sleep at night, and then our ordinary tax that we pay, you know, when we actually get a chance to trade time for money, that ordinary tax. What does this all mean, ladies and gentlemen? My friends, uh here on the call and that's participating in this year's uh, diversity forum. What does this all mean when we complete the dream of Dr. King? How do we put this all together? Why is this relevant? This is relevant because when you think about the concepts and the philosophies of all these men that you see here, these social uh, 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 financial psychologists and uh, uh, social uh, thinkers and authors and or or orators and writers, when you think of these uh, thought leaders that you see here, W.E.B. Du Bois, when you think of Frederick Douglass, when you think of Dr. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, Kelly Miller, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, when you think about this multiplex uh, philosophy, it all culminates to a particular point. You, you may have heard of these, con you know, these brothers uh, pitted against each other. Oftentimes, history does that. Malcolm X versus Dr. King, W.E.B. versus Booker T., things of the sort. That's not the case. Th these brothers were developing a philosophy of leadership that took time to, uh, to, 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 to manifest and to build on, just like manifesting your destiny in this country and have access to the American dream and building something better over time. When you think about uh, Frederick Douglass and the idea of pulling yourselves up by your, by, by your own bootstraps and having a chance to uh, you know, teach yourself the ability to read when it was illegal, you, thought, you, you think about picking your tempo. You think about making a decision, just, you know, deciding on where you want to go, being the CEO of you and making a choice and going forward. Booker T. Washington, his story of Up From Slavery. I read his book, Up From Slavery, and he highlighted how he remembers the Emancipation Proclamation being read on the uh, plantation that he was living on and that um, <laughs> the police officer came and read the Emancipation Proclamation and everybody was free uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, bondage and slavery in that part of the world. And um, he realized that after a couple of weeks that slavery hurt white uh, people as much as it hurt uh, black people. He writes in his story, in his book, if you read it, you'll read it for yourself. That not only could, you know, black people not read and write and things of the sort. And if you read uh, Pedagogy of the, uh, of the Oppressed uh, or you read uh, uh, things of that nature, you understand that not having the ability to read or write basic needs, you know, liter literacy uh, and uh, uh, things of the sort, you know, uh, mathematics, um, if you don't have that basic ability, it makes it harder for you to live and just to, uh, you know, maneuver through life and, and, to, and to, you know, build a culture and, and build success. If you know that to be true and, and Booker T knows that to be true, why would we continue to manifest a world of division? Booker T knew and he writes about this and he talks about how racism hurt white people just as it did black folks. They couldn't read, black folks couldn't write, things of the sort they didn't have access, neither could white folks cook their own food. Neither could white folks till their own land that they own. So a lot of plantations went, you know, they became non-profitable. Of course they would. But people couldn't even, you know, clean their own home. If we graduate from that philosophy, we think about Dr. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, who believed that it was uh, for us to get uh, some sort of education and to send through, edu uh, send through education um, and, 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 and develop ourselves through education and grow uh, educationally from where we are and, you know, education is something like mama say, education, they can't take that from you, boy. Like uh, Dr. Jackie DeWalt would say, that education is a tool. 
like Dr. Marcel Lee would tell us as students and scholars at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, first generation college students, black kids, this is your chance to build something for your family. That's what Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, he would give a thumbs up to that. You may have never heard of this brother right here on the right side, Kelly Miller. We got Frederick Douglass you've seen before. We got Booker T. We got Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. I share in the fraternity, you know, Alpha fraternity with Martin Luther King and W.E.B. and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Frederick Douglass, Kelly Miller. You may not have heard of him. He was, you know, uh, he was thinking not only of, uh, of, of the, the things that, you know, W.E.B. was thinking, which was education, Booker T was thinking in his space was the ability to move yourself up through uh, uh, some sort of a, 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 a trade or some sort of, a, a, you know, ability to build yourself up through a, a construction or, you, you know, uh, some sort of mechanical engineering or architectural, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, plight or farming or things of the sort. He was more about the hands-on approach to life. Of course, he believed in education because he founded a university, a historically black college, but he also heavily was positioned in the media as being anti-W.E.B. Du Bois, just like Martin Luther King was thinking about and, you know, pegged as someone who thought about peace and uh, prosperity as Malcolm X was not thought about as someone who supported black economics and pulling yourself up through your own communal resources and group economics through, you know, collectively building yourselves with people that people would think that they were you know, just opposite, and they were not necessarily opposite. They were different sides of the Rubik's Cube, different sides of the prism of success or where we are today. You think about these different guys, you think about W.E.B. Du Bois, you think about Booker T. Washington, you never heard of Kelly Miller, I'm sure. If you have, thanks to, uh, to you and share with your friends, Kelly Miller took a lot of the philosophies from W.E.B. and from uh, uh, Booker T. and meshed them together. He created this philosophy called A.D., asymmetrical development, where we don't think of ourselves as just intellects uh, or aristocrats or educated people, but we also have the ability to manifest our destiny through uh, uh, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship, creating something that we can call our own in this country. You have that ability to create a rags to riches story. You can create something and grow it into, you can create, create something from nothing and grow it into a, a business and you can invest in yourself, invest in your business, you can remix the future of black life for the next 400 years. This is what we're going to have to do. It's going to be on us to, to create the existence uh, that we desire. It's going to be on us to create these philosophies. I know you don't see any sisters up here. We got Ida B. Wells that could be up here. We got Sojourner Truth that could be up here. We got Her Sister Harriet Tubman that can be up here. We got all kinds of names that could be up here. Henrietta Lacks could, you know, are, they all, I call them into this space. Not that they could be up here, they are here with us here today. And we know when we listen and we read those philosophies and we get into those frequencies of uh, Nina Simone or, uh, 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 you know, so Aretha Franklin, and we hear, the, hear those stories, uh, Shirley Chisholm, when we key into that frequency, you know, like I know, anybody on this call, you all know that for the next 400 years, it's going to be on us to remix the future of black life. We're going to have to demand what we desire. We're going to have to build what we desire. We're going to have to take this multiplex group of ideas, see ourselves as a, a, a blended reality of all of these different songs and these different experiences and stay in sync and rhythm with our ultimate goal, which is to leave intergenerational wealth, which is to uh, rock the party. So I want to leave this with you. I want you to take the opportunity to look up a Roth account on your phone when you get a chance. You'll see how investments over the course of time, just search Roth account. It's a tax-free account that you can put money away in. It grows over time. Look at this chart here. It's just showing you a basic $10,000 investment in 1926 would grow it to 2018 without any further investment. It will grow to about $75 million. We see bull markets. We see bear markets. Bull markets, it's a buck. It's going wild. It's going positive. It's green. It's up 936%. It's up 144%. It's up 845%. It's a bull market. We also see bear markets. Bear markets are down markets, 20% or more. That typically happens, as you see, a bull market, on average, is going to last about seven years. We see that happen every seven years or so. We see a bear market kind of coming to us. So let's just say every seven and a half, seven and a half years, 7.3 years, we see a bear market reach up. 
and you know the market's down. So we put money away, and we think most of us have been educated to where we think that oh, we we'll put money away, I can lose it all. Well, the reality is, if you if you don't play the game, you automatically lose. Because if you have 30 years of your life, if you have time to let the money sit and let it grow, you have time working for you. Time and money actually work well together. Some people say time ain't money or time is money or money don't grow on trees. Money does actually grow. On It might not be a tree, but it does grow. You know what I mean? So we have the chance to build this thing. If we know for a fact every, you know, seven and a half, let's say 10 years, you know, every, let's round up to the nearest 10. Let's say every 10 years we see a down market from 2008, you know, that was a down market with the recession. 2018, we saw a down market. Every, you know, seven and a half, 10 years, we see a down market. If we know we're going to have a down market every seven to 10 years or so, we have to plan for those times. We actually want to go in the market and buy more when, the, you know, when things are on sale. When there's a bear market, you want to buy more. You want to buy low and sell high. We got to get paid like Young Dolph. Young Dolph, if you're a rap fan, you heard of the song Get Paid. If you're a real hip hop fan, you heard of Cash Rules, everything around me. You know, cream, get the money, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Think like a DJ as a leadership philosophy. I don't know what's your favorite step. Pick a tempo, drop your first record, feel the beat, ride the wave, keep spinning hits, ride, you know, uh, feel, feel the dance floor or rock the party. It's up to you to, you know, to feel what you feel. And all feelings are, are, are uh, non-negotiable. Uh, and uh, I, you choose which feels the best to you. That's the message that I wanted to leave you with today when completing the dream of Dr. King is that's going to be up to us for the next 400 years. We've been here, you know, since 16, 19, 400 years or so. We know for a fact that the next 400 years, if, if, if 400 years prior, we haven't got, you know, someone to uh, gift us what we've been asking. We're in a space right now where we have to build on our own desires and create economic inclusion and financial success for the next 400 years. The next 400 my philosophy is that dreams are made to be achieved while I'll create the reality that I desire. Create the reality that you desire. Participate in the American dream. I baked the pie for 400 years. At least cut me a slice. At least give me a slice of the pie. I helped you bake it. Let me participate in the American dream. I know that this is a beautiful context that we live in in this country, and we had a chance to build on this context. I know that we have a foundation of success and uh, uh, some sort of uh, agency in a de democratic society where we can, you know, speak our mind. We can uh, put two and three together and we'll have uh, a multitude. We can build from that. We have a community. One voice can change a room. One room can change a city, one city, a state, a state, a region, a community. We can change where we are. We can build on something new. We have the agency and the power within ourselves to manifest our, des our destiny and heal ourselves and reveal, reveal our wealth. We can aggregate our resources. I ask you to aggregate your resources, time, talent, people, resources, and invest in your dream. Because dreams are made to be achieved, I need you to become the CEO of you so that you can ignite the CEO of this inside of you. You got what it takes. And because you got what it takes, they want to take what you got. Why would you rob a poor woman? You wouldn't do it. You're rich. Thank you for your time. Dreams are made to be achieved. Find me on martinezwhite.com. Engage with me on Instagram at DJM White, M like money, white like the White House. Find me on Facebook. Find me out there in the world. Find me Intuition Productions on Facebook. I thank you for your time. Listen to my podcast, the Think Like a DJ Mixtape Podcast on Spotify, any other platforms. Come see me, you know, DJ, come hang with me and key into this higher frequency and this philosophy of leadership that you think like a DJ and dreams are made to be achieved and you are in masterful control of your destiny. Let's complete the dream of Dr. King and create financial justice and economic inclusion for black Americans in this country.